so I've been immersed in the trauma world uh, for over a decade. And so you, in multiple various uh, environments, settings with different populations, with different ages, different demographics. And there always seemed to be these individuals who had these trauma diagnoses or these depression diagnoses and weren't getting better with the evidence-based treatments that everybody else was responding to. And it was very interesting. I just kept thinking like, I'm doing the same interventions, of course, tailoring them very uniquely to the, un to the individual because mm -hmm. everybody, it does have a unique personality, even though some features are kind of, um, you know, undifferentiated or kind of shared. We all are unique, just like our fingerprint. But then there's these kinds of things that just keep coming up like this, this antagonism, this, this, this combativeness, this blaming circumstances, um, doing the intervention that they requested and it not producing results or it making them worse. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to wonder why aren't these people's nervous systems responding to the trauma intervention that's successful if what is wrong with them is that they've been traumatized? Again, a logical question. Yeah. Um, not an insult, just no. curiosity. Like, why is it that this one person um, keeps doing the same thing over and over, knowing that it's going to produce the same consequences that are life altering? It's the sixth divorce. It's the sixth time in prison. The moment they get out of prison, they go back for doing the exact same thing within 24 hours. Why aren't some people learning from their mistakes? Um, why aren't some people expressing any guilt or remorse? Why aren't some people able to say, I can see where I played a part in that? But then they're still saying that they're traumatized and everyone else is treating them like they are. So, I mean, that's that wall I was talking about, like banging your head against, like it doesn't add up. And then, so then there's this other possibility that maybe we have this starting material that influences much more than we originally thought. I'm not saying that it's all 100% genetic, but what I'm saying is maybe there's something in an individual's temperament where they have an excess or a deficiency in certain traits that prevent them from responding to these treatments. And we have to call that something else then. We can't call it trauma. We have to call it something else. This has been a problem historically in, in psychology since the beginning, which is why they classified personality disorders originally on what was called a different axis. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what to do with the people who weren't responding the way everyone else was, so they just exiled them and said, we're gonna call this something else. I mean, it's probably related to the same thing, but we don't know why they're not acting like the same thing, so we'll just put it over there and figure it out. Well, we're kind of starting to figure it out. Like, um, there's these traits that are innate historically well, it, it makes sense. And, and, you know, I know we touched on it uh, when you were on before. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, let's use the example of twins or siblings, mm -hmm. uh, however, and both of them raised the exact same way. Mm -hmm. You know, both of them side by side. Maybe there's over overindulgence or maybe they experience some sort of trauma in their childhood. And you have one that grows up to be a narcissist. The other one doesn't, or I don't want to say grows up to be a narcissist, but you yeah. know, is, is diagnosed as a narcissist and the other one doesn't, mm -hmm. it makes sense. You were raised as, it makes sense that it would be genetic, right? Even if you weren't raised exactly the same, like even if there were some aspects or features of the parenting in the same household that were a little bit different because even parents have to respond a little differently to, to the unique temperaments of, of their kids. But if, if there was a, a general fairness, a general, you know, uh, generosity, a warmth, a loving, and then it was kind of tailored specifically to certain unique traits of the individuals, there are still cases with twins raised together, but also raised apart where what we've referred to as the concordance rate. So the level, the percentage of things that are the same regardless of environment, regardless of raised together apart, is 77% in twins when it comes to narcissism. Um, how is that, how is that yeah. being ignored? 
Like, how do we ignore that? If, True. I mean, you you literally can have a twin who was adopted from a foreign country, raised in America, and then the other one stays in that country. And and these studies have revealed that 70% one has it if the other does. 